Nicola Goodwin is with John Harrington from the Hereford Transport Forum at the Belmont Roundabout this morning. It's just starting to get pretty busy here at the Belmont Roundabout, which is outside Asda Supermarket in St Martin Street in Hereford. Now, I haven't actually had a chance to count them all because there's so many, but I'm told that there are now 16 sets of lights, plus the new ones that were added um, to make an extra slip lane to go into the supermarket a few years ago. John, what do you think the problem is with this island here in particular? Well, you know what I think the problem is. There's too many lights. There's, there's, there's one too many, let alone 16 too many. We shouldn't have any lights here. Here. We have a what used to be a roundabout. It should go back to being a roundabout. We should allow the natural courtesy and progression of traffic to take us forward and to make maximum use of the road instead of having artificial stops and gaps all the time. We're looking at the road now. There's people waiting on either side and there's no one using the, the, the alternative junctions. That could all be space that would be used up if we went back to the old-fashioned system. And if you turn around, actually, what I can see and you couldn't is that they're doing the same the other side as well, aren't they? Exactly. They're waiting now. Everyone... All the poor lemmings, as, as I am, waiting up Belmont Road, and there's nothing happening on the main junction. They could all be using that space. They could be, they could be getting to work a lot quicker than they are. Traffic would build up a lot less slowly, and it would disperse a lot quicker if we didn't have traffic lights, because the natural progression and the natural usage of the road would make sense and would, it would transfer through, as it has in Portishead and Poynton, and it would work in Hereford. We're going to be talking, actually, to Martin Cassini, the man behind that, later on. Now, as the Hereford Traffic Forum, you've actually met with the highways agency who control this stretch of road. What sort of, I suppose, hope have they given you? Are they willing to listen? They've actually been very good. Credit to them. There's a couple of guys we've been dealing with there, and they have been very, very good. And they are basically saying to us that if there's a political will, they will look at it closely. This is their responsibility, but they are in a city, and they have to be respectful to the authority that's there. So we have then tried to approach the council. They weren't interested. So we're now looking at alternative um, sort of administrations coming in shortly who are much more inclined to look at this and are happy to look at this and are happy to look at solving Hereford's traffic problems sensibly. Of course, there is planning going in for a link road between the A49 and the A465, the two biggest roads south of us. That would link them together. Do you not think that would alleviate the traffic? No, I don't. I, I don't think the link roads have got anything to do with alleviating traffic, and we know that. The council had themselves have said it's to do with unlocking land for development. So it's got nothing to do with solving our problems. Dumping uh, more houses once the link roads are built is not going to help our, our, our issue here. It's got nothing to do with it whatsoever. The, the Her Highways Agency have said that 12 to 15 percent of the traffic only is through traffic. So everyone is actually trying to get into Hereford. Having a bypass, like in Worcester, won't make much of a difference. People say it will, though. I hear day in, day out from relatives, from friends, from colleagues, oh, what we need is a bypass. Do you think it's become a bit of an urban myth? I think it's become a council myth, to be honest. And, and I mean, I say that quite bluntly, and I'm, I'm not being unkind. They are trying to push a narrative that if we have a bypass, it's going to solve all our problems. It isn't. The bypass is to build houses. We know that. It's to unlock land. It's not going to help the traffic problem we have coming through the centre of town because everyone wants to get to work. If we have a school holiday, you can see the difference it makes. As couriers, we can see that suddenly the traffic flows so much easier and it's a fraction of the amount of traffic on the road. The council should be concentrating on decent public transport systems and not worrying about link roads and all the associated apparent benefits, which simply don't exist and are not borne out. John Harrington making some uh, forceful points there. He's from the Hereford Transport Forum uh, at the Belmont Roundabout with Nicola Goodwin this morning. Thanks for your text uh, whilst you're listening to that, Matt, in Hereford. Traffic always flows with the traffic lights out. Even better if people walked with help traffic and people's health as well. Any more you can add to that, so listen to some of the solutions, uh, some of the points that John Harrington was making there. Could removing the traffic lights from Hereford sort out the traffic problem? Uh, says one of you on Twitter here, could Sense spoken about switching off the lights in Hereford? The A49 to the A465 link road in South Y uh, will not reduce congestion. Thank you, our tweeter. A national expert says it could. Uh, local campaigners want to see action from the council uh, as the schools are all back today. The city centre... Well, a bit snarled up, I guess. Uh, Nicola Goodwin is there for us. The traffic's already backing up to the turn for Belmont Abbey, some mile or even more from the Belmont roundabout where Asda is, and the traffic's already backing up. It is the first day back at school for many, and you can see the difference it's made on the road. As I travel down here from the city centre, you can also see lots of traffic coming onto these roads, not just from further down to the west of the county, but from the big housing estates of Belmont and Newton Farm, and everybody is trying to get into the centre of Hereford.
it's causing tremendous problems, especially from anyone coming in from the south of the city. People have to take their children to school an hour and a half in advance. People are trying to get to work, have to go to work an hour and a half in advance to try and get through the traffic. You have to get to the Belmont roundabout uh, at least 7 o'clock if you want to get through town. We need to do it. It's been going on for so long. Well, the man who's already sorted out the situation in many other cities countrywide when it comes to traffic flows, Martin Cassini, is invited by the Traffic Forum campaign group into the city to advise on how to deal with the lengthening queues and the chaos. Uh, Martin, nice to talk to you. Uh, I think it's a couple of times you've been to Hereford now in your role. Your view of the the way the traffic is managed in the city? Generally, um, I find that regulation and the basic rule of the road... um, militates against uh, human beings acting sociably. So the kind of basic idea is to design roads for a social context rather than a traffic engineering context. The the basic rule of the road, as you know, is priority. You know, you're waiting as a pedestrian to cross the road. You have to defer to vehicles because the vehicles have priority over you. Um, why should it be that way? In all other walks of life, we take it in turns. You know, if we, if we jump to cash point queue, we cause a riot. But on the road, we accept that sort of antisocial behaviour without question. So my proposal, which you know, I've been pushing for years, but there's so much resistance to it, is to completely rethink the rules of the road. Let's, instead of living by priority, which creates conflicting dangerous conflicting speeds at junctions we've got the main road barreling through you've got a green light stimulating neglect of other road users uh, people are watching the traffic lights instead of each other so if we li- instead of priority which produces a need for traffic lights to break the priority streams of traffic but it doesn't keep us safe because 25,000 people every year are killed or seriously hurt on our roads and, that, and, and a lot of those are children if we live by equality We just took it in turns, like we do in other walks of life. It worked. Take away the traffic lights. I've seen it across the central London on two occasions when I used to live in King's Cross. You know, people say it it can work on a micro scale, but it works on a macro scale as well. Wherever I've seen traffic lights out of action, action, what happens? We approach carefully. We act sociably. We rediscover our humanity. We basically take it in turns. This is what happened in Portishead. Um, we, We bagged over the lights. Um, everyone was saying it'll never work, but it worked a treat, and they, they haven't looked back, and the, the massive cues are now a distant memory. Martin, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for your time this morning. Martin Cassini, uh, he's a video producer and campaigner for traffic system reform. Uh, you might have a look at his website, because it's quite interesting. Quality Streets, which will give you an idea of what he's been up to.